Hello, my name is Peter Kraus from company Mycian. I want to give you a short introduction about Microwave Wizard. The first you can see after you started the Microwave Wizard is the graphical user interface. At the top of this window you can see the typical menu bar. Below that you find the toolbars with a lot of different buttons. On the left side you can see a tree view which is a tab on the left pane. The second tab is the libraries tab and the third tab on the left side is the tools tab. The center has three tabs. The first of all is the most important one. This, this is schematic editor. Here you can edit the circuit of the structure. The second tab in the center is the frequency response tab. Here you can see the result of the simulation or optimization. And the third tab is the command tab. Here you can enter some commands of the circuit. At the bottom you can see four tabs. The first tab is the messages tab. Here appear all messages coming from the kernel during an analysis, an optimization or a synthesis. The second tab is the netlist tab. It shows the netlist of the current circuit configuration. The third tab has gives the results of an analysis, optimization or synthesis in an ASCII format. And the fourth tab is an optimized monitor. It is actually important during an optimization. Here you can watch the variables or the error over the iterations. Now we start with the microwave wizard's menu bar. There are actually a lot of different menu items but I'm only interested at the moment at four items. First of all is the file menu that provides you an option to start the microwave wizard with an empty project with an example that exists with the microwave wizard or with a start assistant that allows you to design very quick a little project. The second item is the project menu item that provides you an access to frequency ranges, variables, circuits and the default settings. The next one is the start menu item. Here you can start simulation, tuning or optimization of a project or a circuit. The last that I try to describe is the tools menu item. Here you can find all important assistant like the filter assistant, interactive tuning, a macro editor, low pass synthesis and so on. Below the microwave wizard menu bar you find the toolbar. The toolbar has nearly the same functions as the menu bar. You find these buttons as well in the menu bar as well in the toolbar. But there is access is more easier. Um, the tools are context sensitive. That means that the microwave wizard shows only these tools that are available for the certain window. With the project tree view on the left side you have an access to all project related settings such as frequencies, variables, circuits and default settings. You just double click on one of those knots and the certain editor will appear. Um, you can see uh, here the frequency knot, below that uh, is the variables knot, then the circuits knot and the default settings knot. Below the default settings knot you see a field plot knot. Uh, the field plot knot will only be filled when a field plot is simulated. Behind the second tab on the left side you find the libraries. On the top you find the most used elements such as ports, empty waveguides, a short and a so-called waveguide rotate. Below that you see a bunch of libraries that are bands, cavities, coaxial, dielectric resonators, import library, iris and so on.
behind the third tab you find the tools. We have three different kind of tools. Uh, there are inbuilt tools like the filter assistant or the taper assistant, the waveguide tool, Atlas viewer or the interactive tuning tool, the yield analysis or the batch shops or the macro editor. With this macro editor actually you can create the second kind of tools are the macros here. You use this and write in a kind of visual basic code and you save them and you can use them in the micro wizard. The third kind of tools are programmed as well in a different language and you connect them via COM to the microwave wizard. They, those are the plug-in tools. After we loaded the project you can see here an example with the filter. This filter has two sub-circuits. There's the main circuit and uh, the circuit with it is called half. The half circuit is referenced in the main circuit twice. That means that you can save simulation time because you only simulate it once and you use it twice here in this main circuit. And you save memory for, it, uh, for sure. Uh, each element is connected with an empty waveguide. This empty waveguide looks like a rectangular waveguide but it doesn't have to be a rectangular waveguide can be a circular waveguide, can be any kind of shape. Um, here you see there is a red spot. This is actually the port of the circuit or one of the ports of the circuit. Here is the first empty waveguide that is connected to the half circuit. And there is another empty waveguide connected with an iris. And this iris is connected with an empty waveguide again and uh, with the half circuit again. Uh, the empty waveguide can have the length of zero. It doesn't have to have a certain length. But you never can connect a circuit, in this case with an empty, uh, with a iris or whatever. You always have to connect those elements with an empty waveguide. The schematic supports redo and undo functionality. Uh, cutting paste across schematics and across different instances of the microwave wizard. When you double click on, for example, this element, then the next dialog will appear. This is the element editor. On the left side, you see a tree view, and the tree view has different knots, and these knots represent different categories of properties of this element. For example, this element is called uh, IR underline R1 RAD underline 4 and it comes from the element IR underline R1 RAD. This is a certain element. This name actually has to be unique in the circuit. In the circuit. Here you can see the category main. The main contains for example the name of the element or here in this case here the alignment. The port geometries uh, contain all the outer port geometries. So in this case it's the width A1 and the height B1. The values you can set on the right side here. Here you see A2 and A2 is uh, in this case the, uh, belongs to the category geometries. is the inner width of the iris and we set for that a variable that is called tune on the line 4. And this variable has the value 4.70817. We come later to the variables. Uh, here, you, for example, you see the A1 width of the outer waveguide. Again, there is a variable called var underline A1 with a value of 15.8. Or B1, the height of the iris or the outer waveguide, it's called var underline B1 and has the uh, value of 7.9. On the top right pane you see two different fields. First is the cutoff computation and the symmetry in the next line. If you make a double click on this ellipsis, in this case the cutoff frequency ellipsis, the cutoff editor will appear. Here you can see the cutoff editor. Uh, 
Um, the cutoff frequency or the context in when we use this word is not the cutoff frequency of a certain mode. That means that we will take or the simulation will take up to this frequency, in this case 500 gigahertz, all modes into account that are available in this section up to this frequency. Um, this is re called relative convergence because if you have for example this iris uh, you have the outer waveguide dimensions and the smaller iris dimensions. For example the outer waveguide dimension will have a way more modes than the smaller section in the middle, this the iris section. So we only take the modes into account that are available up to 500 gigahertz. So for, for this case maybe in the larger outer waveguide section there will be maybe 200 modes and in the smaller iris section maybe 20. When we start connecting this element to the neighbor element with an empty waveguide we have to tell the empty waveguide come on what do you need? for modes. You don't need all modes because the most modes, especially higher ones, they have a big, big, big attenuation. So you don't see actually the, the energy transporting through this mode. So you only use a few modes. And this will be set here in the connection cutoff frequency. In this case we use 75 gigahertz or 15% of the setting uh, above that. The setting below that is for advanced users at the moment only. It allows you to connect sections that have different symmetry sections. Below the cutoff computation setting of the iris you find the symmetry setting of the iris. When you double click on the ellipsis uh, the symmetry editor will appear. Here you can set the symmetry planes, for example the XZ plane, YZ, XY plane, or the planarity in case of a rectangular waveguide, or the radial symmetry in case of a coaxial or circular waveguide. Additionally to the cutoff setting, the symmetry settings also play an important role in the computation speed. Uh, you should always try to find symmetries and use them because they reduce the number of modes and the number of modes are responsible for the speed of the computation as more modes you use as longer uh, the simulation takes so you should always try to find a symmetry and try to use it the symmetry as well as the cutoff are not only applicable to the elements, they can be used in circuits as well as in the entire project. You find the settings either in the context menu on the schematics when you click the right mouse button on an element or a bunch of elements or you find them in the menu item edit. Another very important dialog is the Project Options window. It's a kind of a dashboard. It contains four tabs. The first is for the frequency ranges, the second one for the variables, the third for the circuits and the last one for the project settings. First of all I explain the frequency ranges tab. Here you can see the frequency range tab. It contains on the left side a list of frequency ranges. Each frequency range has a start frequency, a stop frequency and a number of steps. On the right side you can enter uh, the values for each of those points. It's, uh, here you can see the start frequency with 14.5 gigahertz the stop frequency with 18 gigahertz and the number of steps you want to analyze, analyze is 150. Uh, you can either use one of those in the list below that or you just enter a customized one and you can have as much frequency ranges as you want. 
the second tab of the project options windows is the variable list. It contains a list of variables we can use in the microwave wizard. We have different type of variables, for example, real variables, equations and optimized variables. On the right side, for example, you can see here one of those optimized variables, L underline 3. Here you have the name, here you see the type of the variable, you can set the combo box, and here you see the current value and the min and the max value. You can set some command for each variable, for example, for uh, what that variable is for. The third tab of the project options windows is the circuit list. As I already mentioned, you can have as many circuits, respectively sub-circuits, in your project as you want. On the left side you can see the list. Uh, here you see a main circuit, or it's called already main, and another circuit is a sub-circuit, it is called half. On the right side, on the top, you can see here the name. You can set the name in this field, and below that there are some uh, some tabs where you can set certain settings for the circuit. On the below that you see two checkboxes. One is called compute with 3D FEM and the other one is called compute 64-bit. This means that you can set each circuit if you want this to simulate either with 3D FEM, the entire circuit. That means that all those elements that are placed in the schematic will be simulated at once as a 3D model. If you want to simulate the entire structure beginning with the marked circuit in 64-bit, you have to check the checkbox Compute 64-bit. The last tab of the project options windows is the project settings. You have different settings here. You again, you can see here the cutoff frequency, the symmetry, and other settings. Um, these values are available as default settings. That means all settings you make here, for example, the cutoff frequency, will be set for each circuit on each element at the moment when you create or place these. So that means if you create a circuit in this project, it will assign these default values to the circuit. And when you use the circuit to create a, a structure, so that means you place an iris or whatever, then it will use these settings for this iris as well. So this is the default values for the entire project. That does not mean that you have to have these values. For example, you can change later a cut of different cutoff frequencies to a certain element lower or higher. Uh, even the symmetry is not set forever. That means you can set a different symmetry for a circuit or even an element. The other settings are the default dimensions, for example, for frequency, geometry, and so on. On the top you see some information about the circuit. That means uh, the name of the project, uh, the location on the hard disk, uh, how many circuits this uh, project contains, and number of elements, and so on. These were actually the most important dialogues and windows I wanted to show you in the beginning. Uh, next, or other webcasts will show you how to create a project, synthesize a filter, use little tricky things and so on. I thank you very much for your patience.